several conspiracy theories flooding social media about the death of Ifai Adeleke, the son of international music megastar Davido Adeleke. Granted, Ifai's death came as a shock to everyone. One minute he was everywhere on our news feed, bubbling and thriving, and the next minute he was gone. The suddenness of it all took everyone by surprise. So some of these theories could be explained as a response to shock, but others are downright mean, vicious and alarming. According to some YouTubers and commentators, actress Eniola Badmas has been arrested and in police custody. Those peddling this theory argues that Eniola was the one who called Ifine's nanny on the phone, which made her abandon in um, Ifine to go take the call. Now, there are a lot of loopholes in this theory that they've not accounted for. Did Eniola tell the nanny to move away from Ifine? Did Eniola also tell the cook not to watch over Ifine while um, the nanny was on call? Did Eniola lure Ifine into the pool? While this theory is sensational, it is not credible and the police have issued a press release stating that Eniola was never arrested in connection with the case. Now other people also believe Ifine was killed elsewhere and dumped in the pool. Those peddling this theory believe it is impossible for Ifine to open the door to the pool area due to his size and as such he must have died elsewhere and his body moved into the pool to cover up the crime. The claim he was strangled. I don't know how they came about with strangulation but if you check online majority of them are claiming Ifine was strangled elsewhere and was thrown in the pool to make it look as if he drowned. Now the autopsy result claims otherwise and confirmed Ifine actually died due to drowning. Still not accepting this result, they are requesting for a second opinion. They want to know how qualified the person that did the autopsy is and it's Nigeria anyway so things are always done shabbily so they are requesting for someone to be flown in from abroad to actually take a look at the case to be sure if I actually died in a pool and not elsewhere now the police have no reason to cover up for domestic staff why would the police cover up for domestic staffs? Actually, they should be doing the opposite as in trying to implicate them in the murder of the boy if he was indeed murdered and did not drown in the pool. Other people are also claiming Ifine died because Chioma and the video ignored prophecy. Now, as soon as Ifine died, a couple of prophets came out claiming the saw visions of his death. This one here claimed he saw his vision in January this year and since he didn't have access to the video and didn't want to be seen as chasing clouds, he uploaded his vision onto Facebook because he didn't have access to the video, hoping those in the video's camp or Chiomak's camp would see the prophecy and reach out to him, but nobody reached out to him. This same prophet was exposed last year by his wife on Maureen Badejo's channel as a cultist operating under the disguise of a man of God while using voodoo to divine people's future. This other one actually gave a compound vision for Nollywood celebrities including Davido. According to him, he claims he's in contact with Davido's father, but rather than reach out to Davido's father to pass a message across to Davido, he decided to come say his vision on social media. Your guess is as good as mine as to why he couldn't just pick up his phone and call the, um, and call Davido's father to advise his son according to the vision he saw instead of putting it out on social media knowing fully well that the video or those in his camp might actually not see his post or whatever it is he's doing on social media. Remember it was about, about less, less than three weeks ago when this message started coming off and off. I did it a week and later on I did it again and I did it to make sure Something happened. If possible, they should do three 
days dry fasting. I was giving it right on this altar. I am not giving that message because I am seeking recognition. I'm not giving that message because I want to make sure that he sees me. But one thing is important. The Bible says, let he that has ear, hear what the Spirit is saying. And let he that has eyes see what the Spirit is showing. Let the person that has understanding understand what the Spirit is saying. What you see that happened to the widow Saul was not for him, it was for the, the widow himself. But the Spirit of the Son collected that on behalf of his father. But the enemies are not. According to him, it was the widow's death. I mean, it was the widow that was meant to die, but Ephraim died in place of his father. I can't comprehend this kind of prophecy. Is this even scriptural? This sounds more like what a spiritualist would say rather than a preacher. He went further to promise the widow and Chioma twin boys to replace Ephraim. But in reality, no one can actually replace Ephraim. No matter how many children they have, it cannot replace Ephraim because Ephraim is a separate human being on his own and no one can actually be the new Ephraim. According to Kemi Onlun lawyer, Ephraim died due to their delicate scars. She technically didn't specify exactly what this cause is and rambled on in her usual manner. But their idea is their delicate rejection of their children have led to this cause. According to her, this little girl here called Michelle Anualuwakpo Adelike is Davido's first child whom he rejected. According to Davido, he took a DNA test and he wasn't this girl's father. Kemi is insisting that Davido paid the lab to tamper with the result. She have called for a new test in an independent lab but Davido have refused to present himself for a second test. Kemi, the spiritualist, claims the curse of rejecting children has been following their delicates for a while and that the curse rests on Davido because he is the star of the family and it is his responsibility to break the curse. She also explains that this might be why there have been seven deaths close to the video and that unless he breaks the curse, people around him would keep dying. The video only recently accepted his British baby with his Jamaican baby mama, but the first daughter he has refused to claim. Why would Davido reject a child when he can clearly afford to care for millions? Rejecting one child doesn't make sense and tampering or ducting a DNA test to what end? The question Kemi failed to address is why would Davido reject this child? Clearly, Davido can afford to take care of millions of children, but why this particular child? Why has he refused to accept this child? Don't forget he did a DNA test which proved he wasn't the father of the child. So why is Kemi insisting this child belongs to Davido and requesting for a second test? To what end really? What does Davido stand to lose or gain by accepting or rejecting this child? Now, Kemi has not actually provided any evidence to suggest, concrete evidence I might say, to suggest that the video actually tampered with the first DNA test. I think all of this is just speculating. You know, Kemi, everything is in her head. And like every other conspiracy theory out there, they don't need any proof. They don't need any evidence to start instigating or suggesting things is not right or things doesn't look the way it should look. Now, there are other people who still think Ifine is alive. I understand that the shock has prevented people from accepting reality and some people genuinely want Ifine to be alive. But unscrupulous content creators are promoting the notion that Ifine is alive just to capitalize on people's emotion for clicks and likes. They are uploading videos of sick children in hospitals claiming it is Ifine. This video for instance was uploaded to Facebook 
with people thanking God that he finds alive. Almost everybody around the world knows this boy is dead. The couple's pastor Toby Adegoyega has also confirmed the death of Ifai. International and local press houses have confirmed it. Politicians, celebrities have been paying their condolences to um, the widow and Chioma, yet people want to believe he is still alive. At this stage, even if God comes down to confirm Ifai is dead, those that still don't believe would not believe. Those that want to believe he's alive would believe he's alive. Some people believe the other baby mamas killed Ifine because they are jealous of Chioma and Ifine. Their argument is since the video and Chioma's reconciliation, the video have been giving Chioma his full attention and have relentlessly posted Ifai on social media. A couple of weeks back, London-based baby mama Larissa posted on Instagram claiming she's had enough and would be going live, but she didn't. So we can only speculate about what she wanted to speak about. People claim since Larissa's son is next in line, Perhaps she was the one who voodooized Ifine to make room for her son. This theory contradicts the prophet who claims the video was targeted and not Ifine. They also argue that separating Chioma and the video was the main objective to prevent the 2023 wedding. People have been calling Chioma wifey and Chioma and the video have been seen out in matching outfits, holding hands and it seems like their love is waxing stronger and growing. Our wife, zero, zero, our three. real wife. 100% going down, 2023. <laughs> if Larissa is responsible, how will she force the video to pick her or is she going to voodooize him as well? The most disheartening of all the theories is the one claiming Ifine was a human sacrifice to the Illuminati. This YouTuber has made what he feels is a concrete connection of events leading to the death of Ifine and concludes that the video sacrificed his son to climb up the success ladder. This theory is widespread on the internet. Connection was also made to the band son who died in similar circumstances in 2018. The band too at that time was accused of using his son for rituals, but the band has faded out of the music scene anyway, so if he used his son for sacrifice, shouldn't he be more prominent in the Nigerian music scene by now? The video isn't from a poor home, his family is rich, so even without his music career, he would still live within the 1% circle. So why would he sacrifice his only son for success when his birth guarantees his success? Conspiracy theories are dangerous and misleading. It causes misinformation and emotionally hurts those that they are centered around. Don't forget they are conspiracy for a reason and no evidence is required to propagate them. Connections can be made to things that are not connected when you are determined to find a connection. So, take these conspiracy theories with a pinch of salt. Thanks for watching until I come your way again next time. Ta-ta!